In episode four, the morning show introduces Bradley Jackson to the world, and they have this contrived puff piece ready to go with her mom, making it look like Bradley grew up in the perfect childhood home where she cooked with her mom and had just a really good childhood. And it's really just a bunch of BS. And Bradley goes off script and says, you know, it wasn't all happy. We did struggle at times, and it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. And Alex tries to reel her back in, but Bradley says, no, I just want girls out there to know that you don't need this perfect childhood to succeed in life because you can come up from a tough upbringing and thrive. You know, I had problems, and I'm not talking about just being dared to jump off a cliff into a body of water, but I was suspended from school, and I had an abortion at the age of 15, and when she says that, it's like a bomb going off, and she doesn't realize what she's saying until it's too late. And everybody just kind of freezes, because it's such a shocking revelation to hear that. They quickly get Yanko Flores on to talk about the weather, and really just distract America from what Bradley just said, but Chip and the bosses are freaking out. We're less than five minutes into Bradley Jackson's morning show career, and she just revealed that she had an abortion at the age of 15. This is not exactly the way they planned to start this thing out. And to make it even worse, her mother had no idea she had an abortion at the age of 15. And when she wakes up Tuesday, she opens up Twitter, and it's nothing but nasty messages from the pro-life people. And it proves that this story isn't going away. Bradley heads downstairs, and waiting for her is Alex in a car. And when Bradley gets in, she says, is this the part where you take me to the river and shoot me? And she says, no, this is the part where I take you to the studio to get back on that saddle and do this thing again. And act like yesterday never even happened. Bradley's a little perplexed and says, why do you keep helping me? And Alex is pretty honest and says, I picked you and I don't want those corporate suits to think that they won. So unfortunately, I have to put up with your crap and maneuver around it because my career's on the line. So Bradley takes the suggestion, goes in, gets back on the saddle and gives a heartfelt apology that was written on a teleprompter. But after the show, Chip, Alex... Fred and Corey are all meeting about what to do with this Bradley Jackson situation. And Fred wants to take her off of the interview with the Mitch accuser. And Alex says, we're not doing that because we've already run all these ads saying that she's going to be doing the interview. And if we take her off of it, it looks like a reactionary move. And then Corey interjects and says, yeah, look, half the country hates her, but half the country loves her. And if we take her off this interview, then the leftists that love her are going to now hate us because now we're the bad guy because we took her off the interview. So by taking her off of it, we're literally alienating everybody. So we might as well just keep her on. So it's decided that Bradley will stick with the interview. But Chip and the Morning Show team have another issue because after this meeting, an investigator has arrived and she's going to go around and interview everybody on the morning show to figure out what the systematic problem is that allowed Mitch Kessler to get away with sexual harassment for so long. Before her interview, Chip goes to me and says, look, we got to kind of take one for the team here. Don't bury the company because of her past relationship with Mitch. And obviously Mia had a relationship with Mitch, consensual. But you come to find out that it started off with flirting, then it moved into Mitch talking about his failed marriage and how there was really no sex life, and then it moved into consensual sex. But eventually Mia called it off, and the investigator thinks that Mia is the one who tipped off the Mitch story to the New York Times. And the investigator says, I just figured that you would be the one to tip off to the New York Times because you're the one who went to HR about Mitch. And she says, I went to HR about Mitch because I was sick of seeing him stand up there and talk about the Me Too movement, acting all sincere when he clearly wasn't. So while we still don't know who tipped off the New York Times, we now know that Mia was the one who tipped off HR. So while Mia was able to open up to the investigator, everybody else is on edge. No one more so, though, than Yanko Flores, who is dating Claire, a younger PA. And to those that don't know their relationship, it looks a lot like the Mitch Kessler situation. Older guy dating a younger girl underneath him in the pecking order of the company. So he is extremely stressed out. And that night, he's sitting there with Claire, and he asks her, Am I doing the stuff to you that Mitch did to these girls? And she says, no, if anything, if anything, the power difference in this relationship is on my side, because while my father has never watched our show, he's powerful enough to make one phone call and get you fired. So if anybody's taking advantage of anybody here, it's me taking advantage of you. And while this is a nice sentiment, it still doesn't put Yanko's mind at ease. On Wednesday, a little bit of the heat from the Bradley Jackson announcing that she had an abortion at the age of 14 has worn off, and America is starting to positively respond to Bradley Jackson. She comes off as uniquely human in a field that has a ton of robots. At one point, she's reading off a teleprompter, and she's supposed to say young adult, but they don't type out young adult. They type out YA. So she literally says, yeah. And people seem to like that she can make mistakes. Now, while some of the heat has worn off, not all of it. There are still protesters outside protesting that she's hired. But the one thing that's changed is now there are protesters that are protesting those protesters. 
that are supporting Bradley Jackson. And this story has gone viral all throughout the country to the point where in Mississippi, high schoolers are walking out of high school, boycotting school for six hours because there's only one abortion clinic left in Mississippi and it takes about six hours to get there. And when the governor of Mississippi made some offhanded comment about Bradley to help his political campaign, it completely backfired because people like the fact that Bradley was honest. So in a way, this announcement has helped Bradley because while it alienated some people and it lost some sponsors, it got a lot of people's eyeballs on the show and it's picked up a lot of traction for the morning show. So much so that they're seeing ratings boosts that they haven't seen in years. And on Thursday, when the morning show has Kelly Clarkson perform her new song, Kelly Clarkson makes mention that she stands with Bradley and she loves Bradley Jackson. So the support for Bradley is rolling on into her Friday interview with the Mitch Accuser. And before the show on Friday, Bradley's sitting in her office prepping, and Corey walks in and says, it's kind of weird being in here, right? This is where it all went down with Mitch. And she says, yeah, it's a little weird. And he says, I just wonder who knew. And that's the problem, because no one's talking. Everybody's acting like Mitch was this saint, great guy, but nobody's saying they knew anything. At the moment, though, Bradley really doesn't care because while she's prepping, she has a problem. She feels like all the questions are softball questions. She feels like she's pushing this agenda for the company and protecting the company because the story they're planning on putting out there is that they had a flirtatious relationship, Mitch took it too far, and then she felt the pressure and she quit. And it's just hard to figure that that would lead to somebody quitting. And Mia says, yeah, you're doing a favor for the company, but don't get it twisted. This is a good, hard interview. So Bradley starts interviewing Ashley Brown, the Mitch accuser, and she starts throwing out the softball questions and... Ashley, as you can understand it, would be very reluctant to give any more details than she has to. And because of the fact she's not getting Ashley to open up, she decides to go off script. She asks her, why didn't you go to HR? Did you not think this was a safe work environment? And Ashley mentions that there was an incident. And while she's interviewing her, everybody in the control room is yelling at Bradley to get back on track. Except for Corey, who's continuing to tell her to go on and push forward. Literally. Everybody's pissed off except Corey. Alex is so pissed off, she comes on the stage and just stares her down. But Alex mean mugging her isn't going to deter her, and she keeps pushing on through the interview, trying to get Ashley to open up, and finally, she does. Ashley reveals that she would go into Mitch's dressing room and blow him. And while she never told HR or never told anybody in the office, everybody knew what was going on. And because of what happened, everybody was kind of looking down on her. And what Mitch took from her was her dignity. And after a while, Ashley just didn't recognize the person who she became. And it is a really good interview, and Bradley certainly gets the most out of it, but when she comes off set... Alex is waiting for her and is livid. Alex says to her, I gave you this platform, but Bradley cuts her off and just says, did you know? And Alex is a little confused and says, what? And Bradley says, did you know about Mitch? And Alex looks her in the eyes and says, how dare you? And then storms off. So here's the part where I beg you guys to uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel. There's a button in the top left corner there. And if you don't see the next video for this recap, not to worry, it'll be up soon. And thanks for watching.